Coming up on New England Ski Journal, we're at the Beast of the East Killington and Pico Mountain where we found great skiing, great lodging, and all the opera needed for a great getaway adventure. So I think of the Beast of the East as you know, a big resort it's aggressive, it's got a lot of different variety. We have some of the best steep double black diamond trails, as well as we have some of the best learning terrain. We have six peaks, we have a high speed lift going to each peak, which is really unique. It's just one of those mountains that you could ski for days and really not even go back on the same trail if you didn't want to. Every season, they're the first to open and the last to close. And Killington always has something for everyone. Mm. Of all these different peaks, we have a, basically a base lodge in each area. So you have Ram's Head is generally the family area. We also have a bunch of parks there. Then you move over to Snowden Peak and we have the new six pack bubble chair. And if you go over to Killington Peak, we just built a brand new base lodge there. And then you take that gondola up to the top and that's one of our other brand new lodges. Beautiful peaks from 4,000 feet. So that's really exciting. You, know, you move around the mountain and you go over to Bear Mountain that has the steepest mogul run in the east. And then you can go down to Skyship, which is all the way down by Route 4. You know, there's a five mile trail that takes you all the way down to the bottom. And that's a really fun, everyone that comes to Killing has to try that trail. Once you get to know it, it's pretty easy to get from one area to the other. And an intermediate person can ski from all the peaks. And the founder of Killington, Press Smith, designed the resort and built all these different peaks. One of the things he wanted to do was have beginners go to the top of every peak, which sounds amazing, right? We have a green trail coming from all these peaks. The downside is, as you put green trails in, they intersect other trails. So one of the things we've been working on to try to make Killington feel less crowded and have less intersections is we've been adding tunnels and bridges around the mountain. And what that's done is it's helped spread people out. They're also making changes to their lifts. We've tried to change some of our lift configurations. So we look around the mountain and say, where are most of the people skiing on a busy day? And how can we move more people to this part? And the way we've done it is by making lift infrastructure improvements in areas that people weren't skiing. So now if you look at our mountain, we're much more balanced across the mountain. We've really, as a company, tried to improve the resort by taking feedback from people that are out on the trails and going, hey, you should think about this or why not that? We listen to them and take advice from them and try to be open and transparent about what we're doing. And I think that's really helped the culture here. So for anybody that hasn't been to Killington or if you've been here and haven't been here in the last couple of years, you really need to come back and, and try us out. And I think you'll also find that the guest experience from all our staff, people are just working hard to make sure you have a great experience. After a full day at Killington, it's time for Opre. If you're looking for a place with a good mix of people, the first place you might decide to land is the Lookout Tavern. We're the closest place to the resort, and people ski the morning session, they want to stop in for lunch. Same thing with Opera. when they're coming down the hill, we're a natural selection, kind of that first watering hole on the left. I don't know how I would describe the menu. I would say classic American with Mexican, with barbecue. We use a smaller menu with signature items, burritos, burgers, handmade soups and chili every day, French onion, and then creative salads, entrees with steaks and salmon and fish, but not a lot of that in order to keep everything fresh and good. We try to keep our menu manageable, the same thing with our draft selections. We offer eight great Vermont products on tap. Killington is a huge ski resort, but the community is not just made up of resort people. Same with the Lookout Tavern. It isn't a totally white collar ski area. Killington has never been that way. It's always been a mix of white and blue collar. So if somebody's looking for a quiet, candlelit dinner, it's typically not this place. We're more public, more conversation, the volume's a little bit higher. And with that, you kind of draw a certain type of clientele. 
I'm not saying they're all loud and boisterous, but we certainly bring in some of the fun local characters on a daily basis. So if you're in Killington, stop in and say hello. Next on New England Ski Journal, Killington's brand new K-1 base lodge is open for business. And if you ski in the Northeast, you know Waffle Cabin. We'll meet the man behind it all. New England Ski Journal's Base Camp Podcast is the weekly podcast on the New England ski scene and beyond. Be sure to download Base Camp wherever you get your podcasts or at skijournal.com. Hey everyone, Ray Stenson here from Country Ski and Sport, and today we're going to be talking about goggles and helmets. If you can't see, you can't ski, and if you don't have a helmet, you're not being safe. When you're purchasing goggles, the one thing to look at is the lens. The lens is going to be the most important feature of the goggle. So I have three different goggles here. I have one from Oakley, I have one from Giro, and I have one from Smith. They're all great, but have different features. This Oakley is one of my favorite. I just love the looks and the presentation of this goggle. Paired with Oakley's prism lens, this lens and goggle is designed for any condition, allows you to see the snow and have fun on the slopes. This next goggle from Giro has a Zeiss lens, very well known. Lenses that are made for high performance, again, to allow the skier to see the depth of the snow while skiing. And this final goggle from Smith is a new goggle this year. It's an IO Mag S. This particular goggle is designed for someone with a smaller face, but the key feature to this goggle is it has a magnetic clip, so you can easily switch out the lens. The difference between all the goggles is really gonna be the lens and the size. The most important thing is to get the lens that's gonna work well for you. So next is helmets, and today I have two that I really want to show you. The first helmet is going to be from Giro. This is the Neo. This helmet is going to be great for the skier that's just getting into the sport, or for someone who doesn't want to spend a lot of money but get a lot of value. This helmet's going to have all your safety features. It's going to have this yellow sticker here. This is going to protect against uh, rotational force in any helmet. Um, so what you're looking for is a helmet that has this MIP sticker on it. Basically, you're looking for comfort and features when you're looking for a helmet. If you don't have a comfortable helmet, you're not gonna wear it. The next helmet that I have today is a Smith Vantage. This is one of my favorite helmets because it fits like no other helmet. It has a adjustment system that adjusts from the temple back, which allows for a perfect fit. It also has um, aero core to help make the helmet safer, but also lighten it up and increase the breathability and a bunch of vent zones. And the most important part of helmets is to make sure you own one. You need to have one out there. So helmets and goggles are just two pieces of the puzzle. We have everything you need here at Country Ski and Sport. So come down today where we can get you fit in the right equipment so you have an awesome day on the slopes. We're located in Hanson, Quincy, and Westwood, Massachusetts. At Killington, they're always looking for new ways to improve the guest experience. And this winter, they opened their brand new K-1 base lodge. The new lodge is about 50% bigger. It's almost 60,000 square feet. It's a massive building. You know, three floors, main level is at grade with the gondola. And then we added two escalators up to the food court level. And then if you go from that level up to the next level is where the bar area is. And so we've added about 50% more occupancy, so that's gonna help us handle our busier days. One of the things we've been working at Killington is really trying to elevate the food experience. You know, everything's on China, you know, using real forks and knives, not the plastic stuff. So we have a nice stone wood-fired oven that we cook our homemade pizzas in. We're also cooking our pretzels out of that oven. The salad bar has been great for us. Salads are all mixed and tossed to order. Upstairs here at the pub, we have both a mix of nice appetizers and entrees. A nice poke bowl with a ahi tuna. We got octopus tacos coming on board in a couple weeks. Our staff really enjoy working here. They like being the biggest and the best. We really want to make sure that we're the ones pushing it, right, and really changing what's going on in the ski industry. So hopefully something like this, the K1, kind of changes the whole ski industry in general. People are coming here to, to ski, but they're also coming here for a great time and, and to experience our food and beverage outlets that we have. Killington has an abundance of food choices, but if you just have to have a bite but can't stop skiing, you know where to go. I'm uh, Peter Kreif, one of the owners of the Waffle Cabin. 
Uh, we're right here at the Killington Base Lodge area where we make our specialty sugar waffles. Also called Liège waffles, Peter first began to sell them in 1999 from a push cart in Boston. First came into the Boston area, tried, wasn't really working, and basically by analyzing that whole scope of things, I came up with the idea of doing this in ski resorts, which has been a bullseye from pretty much day one. The first ski resort waffle cabin was at Killington, and now it's pretty hard to find a ski resort in the Northeast that doesn't have one. It's a win for the guests because they get this extra service where they can grab and go. It's a win for the resort because it elevates their customer service that they're presenting as a whole. But in ski resorts, you've got cold weather, warm waffle, but when we start making this waffle, the aroma of the waffle, that is basically our marketing. And it has turned into quite a lucrative business. Right now, we have 13 corporate locations and we've got 31 franchise locations. And there's franchise opportunities for anyone interested. So what's the secret to the Waffle Cabin waffles? It's got butter in it, so it really has that richness. It's got vanilla in it. It has a special ingredient which is called pearl sugar. It's kind of like nibs of sugar that are in the dough. They stay in that dough ball. When you bake it, it caramelizes and it makes the outside kind of crunchy where the inside is soft and chewy. This is actually a waffle that really doesn't need any topping whatsoever, yet it's better than any waffle you will have with a topping. It's that good. Coming up on New England Ski Journal, a place to lodge for the night and more au prey. New England Ski Journal is your complete source for skiing and the outdoors in New England. With some of the best writers and photography in the industry, New England Ski Journal will inform and inspire you with insight and advice on the ski and outdoor scene like no one else. From special destinations, resorts, lodging, gear, backcountry gems, the opera scene, as well as summer and fall experiences, New England Ski Journal is your go-to source for guide and adventure. Log on to skijournal.com forward slash subscribe to start your ski and outdoor experience today. If you're looking for daily content on the New England ski and outdoor scene, skijournal.com has you covered. Delivering insider information with their expert lineup of ski and outdoor journalists in the industry. Looking for your next ski experience? Check out all of our New England Ski Journal episodes at skijournal.com as we visit some of the best ski resorts and destinations in the region. We are back at Killington where skiers come from all over the world. Some eventually stay in the area to follow their dream. And we ended our former careers mm -hmm. and we're looking for something different where we could work together in areas that we love. And we'd spent time in Killington before and they started exploring properties and found this. This would be the Snowed Inn. Ken and Carolyn bought the inn two years ago from the previous owner who had the place for 35 years. We feel like we picked up where they left off only with our flair. All the rooms are totally redone. The lighting, the bedding, the beds. We're pretty detail-oriented, so we have little touches everywhere. We have the fireplace roaring every day, starting at like three o'clock, if not sooner. We bake chocolate chip cookies every day. We want you to feel comfortable going to the hot tub, so we supply you know big, comfortable robes and slippers. We have a coffee bar that has enormous amount of herbal teas and coffees and hot chocolate, and it's available to them 24-7, complimentary. So we do have a bar. Uh, where we serve beer and wine and some uh, light pub fare. We do breakfast a little differently. So when somebody comes in, we give them a breakfast menu and they fill it out and they drop it in a special breakfast box. And we're able to prepare for that either the night before and the morning of. So we bake fresh croissants every morning and we make bacon, egg and quiche every morning. Ken and I personally serve breakfast every morning. 
and they have no regrets about their move. We have the opportunity every day to meet new people and that's fun for us. We've just been embraced by the community. It is a great place to live, it's a great place to be, and we are genuinely enjoying being in Killington. Not too far down the road, we found a new business started by a local family. We grew up skiing here in Killington, we all did as a family, and when this building in Opportunity came for sale, we decided that this would be our first venture together. So Caroline and her father went into the business of making spirits. We both were always interested in distilling, as well as trying to find something that was unique and unique to Killington. We make basically all the spirits. We have a vodka, we have a white rum, we have a dark rum. We have an agave in a reposado, which is a tequila basically. We have our maple cask bourbon, which is our beyond number one seller. We also have our gins. And they have a full restaurant where you can sample all of them. We have a pretty tavern-based menu that we added sort of a Mediterranean flair. Some signature staples are our wings. For our seafood lovers, we have our mussels. And then we do have a full dinner menu as well. I love the restaurant portion, but the distillery and the distribution of the spirits is really our passion. There's a lot of artistry in it, but also there are engineering parameters that you have to accomplish to make a you know really good spirit. Right now we're running the uh, vodka column. We have two options we can run it through which give it more refinement, or we can just run it as a traditional pot still. We always try to spend a couple of nights a week just sort of watching even people's reactions at the bar. Like the maple cask bourbon, for example. Watching people's faces of who are like, I don't drink that, no way. And then their friend will be like, just taste it. And then they'll be like, oh wow, okay, I could actually drink that. It is a really cool thing. Stay with us as we bounce over to Pico Mountain, a part of Killington with a dedicated following and a laid back vibe. Welcome back. We are at Killington Ski Resort where we have not really looked at the backcountry scene, but here is a place that covers everything you need to enjoy it. My name is Ben Clona. I'm the owner of Base Camp here in Killington, Vermont. We're the only telemark and backcountry focused ski shop in the central Vermont region. We also cater to snowshoe uh, rentals and tours, cross country, backcountry skis, full year round mountain bike shop as well with about 20 miles of single track out our back door. We cater to really the outdoor enthusiasts in all seasons. The pandemic and desire to get out in the wilderness has helped the growth of backcountry skiing. A lot of the resorts have gotten into allowing um, uphill travel at their locations. People having safe access really is what it comes down to. However, with that said, there are new backcountry zones that have become established. Our ski wall here is going to be fairly niche on the backcountry skiing slash touring. However, a lot of these skis are crossover and plenty of them will ski resort just fine. We really have a great mixture of clothing here. Most of it will be a waterproof type of clothing, but we also have very breathable pieces for the uphill travelers so they can really dump that heat and, and still be protected. Everybody walking through the store, we sell beer, you know, it's a cool low key vibe here. And we'd be happy to fix any damage ski you have. We're not gonna, you know, call you out on hitting rocks. That's just part of the game. We're selling fun, nothing in here you need to survive. Um, maybe beer, but other than that, we're here to enhance the customer's experience for potentially a, a scenario that they're not accustomed to, and we're here to answer those questions and help them guide them along. Love to have you guys check us out. Face the Access Road here in Killington. We have all of our product online, also for sale. A lot of this product you can't really find anywhere else. It is fairly niche. That definitely is nice, and um, please feel free to check it out. It's been over 25 years since Killington purchased Pico Mountain, but although that has contributed to its growth, the resort right down the road is still a favorite to many locals. Pico's the friendly mountain. It's been here since 1937. A lot of local families come here year after year after year. Now generations of families are coming back. Great mountain right in the shadow of Killington. We have some great tree and glade skiing. And it's just a nice all around mountain for people to come enjoy it. I think Pico is probably the most underrated mountain in Vermont. 
The terrain here is great. You know, it's that classic old school New England feel to it. And the nice part is when you come down the mountain, all the trails end at the base lodge, so you don't get lost. Last Run Lounge has been around for a long time and uh, it's a great place. We have a great crew up there again this year. He said, I take what you do, but I think you're wasting your time. Pico is closed on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, making Thursdays popular after a big storm. They also occasionally rent out the mountain. We give them tickets, food and beverage, and they have the mountain to themselves. We're closed to the general public, and it allows them to use all the trails that we have open that day and the base lodge, entertain guests. It's a great perk for some of these companies to just show appreciation for their customers to come to the mountain for the day. You know, Killington's massive. There's a reason it's called the Beast. And then you come down the place like Pico where it's just got the same terrain as Killington, but it's got that smaller mountain family feel to it. We'd love to see you come here, skiing for all abilities. We pretty much have everything right here in a little tight-knit community. So if you want to avoid some of the crowds and have a nice leisurely day here on the mountains, we're still the fourth largest mountain in the state of Vermont at 3,900 feet. It's a big mountain with small mountain charm. For more information, including how to rent out Pico Mountain, go to picomountain.com, or you can also go to killington.com for all that goes on at New England's largest ski resort. We'll see you next time on New England Ski Journal.